Hello everyone and welcome back to Caravan of Garbage, the show where people go, hey, you should do the Thor movies because there's a Loki TV show coming out. And what did we say, Mason? James, we said... This is absurd. That's not tenuous enough of a link. We're like, mm. just stretch out the longest bow humanly possible. Loki, another thing with the same Loki in it. I'm like, no, 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 no. He's a, he's a mythological figure. Let's, let's, let's find something more obscure. Maybe something where Loki's maybe mentioned once. <laughs> sure, yeah. And then we'll talk about it for two movies. That sounds good. Maybe two. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit at the end. But yeah, we're of course talking about James. Yeah, sorry. 1994. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you what it was all about. I would love to know. The famous actor Jim Carrey breaking yeah. through to the mainstream. It's true. Holding your gun sideways. Bam. bam. The band Royal Crown Review. <laughs> Now, can you imagine all those things in one piece of media? You can't. It's very sad, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Anyway, this is the end of the video. Mason, no. Oh. First of all, leave a like on this video because this video is still going. If you're if you're if you're a crowny, <laughs> you're loving that royal crown review. You can be a squirrel nut zipper as well. It's okay. Uh, what, what, what? You cannot be a cherry pop and daddy though. I will not accept that. So yeah, we're of course Goldfinger. Talk- Come on. I do like Goldfinger. Real big fish. Yes, please. Yeah, I lo- big fan. That's not what this video is about. I could I could talk about these <laughs> bands all day. And by talk about them all day, I mean just say the names of the bands. <laughs> so we're, of course, talking about The Mask from 1994, which, you know, was this kind of underground new line comedy, which they weren't really sure how it was going to go because of what you might know of the movie. The source material, the comic which it's based off, is vastly different. You could show your kids uh, this movie today. Mm. You might have to cover their eyes at certain points. When he brings out the dinger, he's like, look at this dinger. Yeah, when he's like, yeah, guess <laughs> sun, what I've been doing. It's unrolled. <laughs> Right. But mostly, you could uh, you could show your kids this movie, but you should probably not show your kids the Dark Horse comic mm. that it was based on because it is brutal. Yeah, Loki is less the god of mischief than the god of murder. There's a scene in this movie where uh, Stanley Ipkiss, uh, who has uh, got the powers of the mask and he's uh, been cornered by the police, he gets out of it by playing the uh, Desi Arnaz classic. The Cuban Peter Rumba. People remember the song. They remember the dance They do moves. a little dance. The police get into a conga line. Then he makes a run for it once he's distracted them all with good vibes and charm. Yeah. But in the comic books, the way he gets out of that is he kills them all with a flamethrower. Here's a picture. That's very different, that picture, isn't it? From what happened in the movie. Sure is. Yeah, so it's a very dark and twisted character. And also the mask in the comic book. It, well, first of all, it's passed to multiple people. Because they all die. Because they all die, including Stanley Ipkiss. Who after, girlfriend shoots him. Yes, after he goes on his murder spree, <laughs> his girlfriend shoots him, yes. Because this, you were saying to me earlier, um, this is New Line Cinema, who yeah. are probably best known for their horror movies. They're, yeah. they're kind of low-budget, cheesy horror movies, including Nightmare on Elm Street. Including the movie Mortal Kombat. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and so it strikes me that they might have been looking for some sort mm. of Uh, Freddy Krueger-esque, shape-shifting, kind of sinister but funny kind of monstrous character. Mm. And then it sort of evolved into a a, a more fun, family-friendly kind of guy. And that's exactly what it was. They were literally going, we need kind of the new Freddy Krueger. But as, you know, the writing process evolved, it turned into this kind of Tex Avery cartoon-style lunatic but more family friendly. You know where you've got broken teeth and squashed heads, but everybody's everybody's fine in the cartoon by the end of the cartoon. Do you know what I mean? Maybe yeah, someone's a bit down on their luck or whatever because they have to eat a fish skeleton. But, but then they see a pretty lady and their head turns into a wolf and steam comes out of their ears and they go, a wooga, a wooga, and their jaw drops to the table and their tongue rolls out. My goodness. They say a wooga again. They say a wooga, they say a wooga as many times as they can in a particular scene, can't they? That's exactly There's right. There's certainly yeah. a lot of that in this movie. So originally who was considered was Matthew Broderick, Steve Martin, Rick Moranis, Martin Short, Keanu Reeves, Mike Myers, John Ritter, Robin Williams, not all combined into one. (laughs) Though I wouldn't mind a movie where the mask jumped from those people as they were all murdered. Some of these people are dead, just looking at this list. It would have to be something that was done at the time, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but then it ended up being written specifically as a breakout vehicle for Jim Carrey. And they got him at the perfect time because... Just prior to this movie being released, Ace Ventura came out, which was a huge hit. Yep. So they managed to get him for 450 k for The Mask. And then at the end of the year, he did Dumb and Dumber. So he had an absolute bumper year, 1994, yes. which led into, you know, your Batman Forevers, your Me, Myself, Irene's, Fun with Dick and Jane. That's right. The good movies he did also. The many good movies yeah. he did, including Sonic and Sonic 2, probably. Here's a list. Of, here's his IMDb page. We here's know everything all, ever did. And, and TV. 
TV and stand up, and yeah, yeah. you know, and that video where he's doing different impressions. So that's also in, in there. living color. The the sketch show exactly. And that's I love you, Phil, Philip Morris. We <laughs> we we know them all. What a what a great year for Jim Carrey. It really was, and, like, a, and a great year for holding your gun sideways. <laughs> Two things. But here's the thing: at the time when this came out, this looks like everything that I would love. You know, it's a cartoon come to life. Mm-hmm. It's a comic book character. It's wacky antics. But to this day, yes. this movie is fucking insufferable. I, I just, there is something about it, which it's just, it's noise and hats and teeth. And it's just like a whirlwind of just irritation. Sweet, sweet music. <laughs> no, sweet, Mason. Sweet music. <laughs> and that's the thing, though, because... And I would say to you, James, hey, Pachuco. <laughs> Just chill out, man. Yeah, look, and I understand that because I know I am in the minority of this because it is a classic, but I don't like his funny little musical numbers, even though he's an amazing dancer and Cameron Diaz is genuinely good in this. Mm. It was her breakout role too. And speaking of, there's a lot of, you know, the director wants you to go, oh, look at bloody Cameron Diaz. Take a look at these pins, boys. Have a bloody good look. Oh, a wooga. A wooga. You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't... How can we get across the... <laughs> The platonic ideal of a wooga. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way, yeah. Does technology allow it at this point? It does. Yeah. The wolf head with the The wolf head and all that, yeah. That's a genuinely great find. Because she's a movie star, you know, off the back of this. Charlie's Angels. Yep. Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. The one where it's about Christmas. Yep. Bad Teacher. Mm Mm-hmm. Day and Night with Tom Cruise, but Night might be with a K. Here's half her IMDb page. (laughs) Maybe we've forgotten some. (laughs) Okay, well, you, you, so you're saying you don't... No, I've got a list. I don't like his musical numbers. I don't like his horrifying green face. Okay. I don't like any of his voices, costumes, or references. And I don't like how horny he is. It's very upsetting. And I don't like Stanley Ipkiss as a character before he becomes the mask. He's not endearing. He's a creep. He's an r slash nice guys guy. When he is simply king of the insults, the ultimate beta cuck. Exactly, because the mask, as we know, and they tell you in this movie, when you put it on, it enhances kind of your deepest desires. So when Dorian puts it on, he's a weird lunatic mob boss with a monster head, Mm -hmm. and Jim Carrey's just really horny. That's right. Well, look, I agree with you there. He is too horny. Don't kiss random women on the street. They didn't. They don't want it. Leave the women alone. But I, th- I think beyond that, I, I thought the mask was delightful, and I think I reckon maybe like seventy thirty. Like I liked his jokes to like. Oh, that's a bit. Uh, you know, that's a bit dated even now. Even even yeah. in the nineties, but. Uh, Oh, I, 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 I enjoyed this for what it was, I think. Yeah, and the thing is as well, like the things that I don't like about this are things that Jim Carrey is excellent at. Right. Like his impressions and his physicality, even things like the CGI in this, they saved money because he could physically do things that then they didn't need to alter later. He could bend his, his legs all the way around. Exactly. Yeah, he could cough in that man's face. <laughs> right in his face. That was a funny bit, you got to admit. That He's coughing a- away and then he coughs <laughs> right in the guy's face. That's good. That's good stuff. And another thing... Thing that I can very happily and openly admit to liking in this movie is the special effects are groundbreaking. ILM, you know, who worked on Jurassic Park, and yeah. and here's their IMDb. Here it, here it is. Look at it all. Wow. It's too many things, isn't it? But I think the blend of the practical mask with seeing a cartoon come to life is genuinely amazing. The way that even the mask gets constructed over his face. When it forms up the first time around the back of his head when he puts it on, it looks well, amazing. Well, that and even the actual prosthetics gives a freedom of movement to him where he's not yeah. lost in it. That's true. And you'd think it wouldn't work, especially for the time, because when you put heavy prosthetics on a person, they kind of disappear in a bad way. The often. Crichton effect, I call it. The cri- what's what, what's an example of a Crichton effect? I can't. I don't have an example. Oh wait, Crichton from Red Dwarf. Oh, correct. Yes. I thought you meant Michael Crichton. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something from one of his books, doesn't it? Yeah. So there's just something about this character that I just don't find endearing. Like, even, you know, you go to his house and he's watching Screwball Classics 2 on VHS and, like, what are you... What? 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 Yep. He's just an innocent <laughs> man, an innocent, creepy man. Just writing into the paper being like, oh, I'm nice and girls don't like me. I am bought tickets to this girl, but she doesn't like me. Shut up. She doesn't like you because you're a weird creep. She knows you're a weird creep. You hit on her at the bank. It's weird. Yeah, exactly. Don't do that at your workplace. Nah, you don't do that. Okay, here's a joke that I did enjoy. You know when he's been arrested by the police and they're emptying all his pockets? Yep. He brings out a, a picture of the uh, police captain's wife. That's funny. <laughs> sure. That's funny. I mean, it's too horny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's very funny. Okay, I, I've actually written down some more things that I do like because I don't want people coming at me with their with their pro-mask opinions. Get out of my face. <laughs> you're an anti-masker, you'd say. <laughs> no. no. 
No, only specifically in relation to this one movie and okay. maybe the sequel, which I haven't seen. All right. But I think the dog is amazing. The best dog acting in Hollywood. Yeah. I'm going to assume that uh, that dog is... Um is still alive, living on a farm. I mean, I don't, I don't know this for a fact, but that dog is dead. Oh man. Yeah, it died of being a, a dog, and dogs not don't live as long as people. Huh. Necessary. So even if that dog, or in, or in some sort of Hollywood stunt show. Even if that dog was minutes old when this movie was filmed, uh-huh. it's been you know twenty five plus years. Mm. Dog is dead as a dog could be after that amount of time. Unless this dog got real rich off the mask and invested very well and is, you know, subsisting largely on younger dogs' blood. <laughs> okay, like infusions sure. of younger dogs' blood. You know what? I'd be happy to do it. I'd sacrifice a bunch of dogs for this dog to live because it does some great dog acting. It does, like, little double takes. It does, right? It's incredible. At one point, he, Milo, the little dog, he's, he wants to escape Stanley Ipkiss's apartment when the bad guys are there searching for the money. Mm. And and he does a little double take. He's like, <laughs> I've got to make sure they're not looking. Now I'll leave. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, sure, they did it with two different bits of meat or whatever, but... Whatever. Worked. He's doing it, isn't he? He's doing, yeah. he's doing big jumps to get into yeah, the jail yeah. cell. Yeah. The jail cell, which is just... You can just see out into the street, which is fine. People can hand you anything. That's right. But yeah, so I, I love the dog, genuinely. Not from the comic. An original addition to this movie, so well done. I liked that so many of the henchmen are just are just greasy goons. Yeah. Just greasy goons. Oh, my <laughs> God. Gr- greasy ponytails for days. Oh, my God. One guy is a shaved head and just to the ponytail. Oh, my God. Yes, please. And it's greasy. I should yeah. point that out. And another bit I like is I like where he accepts the fake award, like the fake Oscar, and he's doing like the Sally Fields thing, which was probably a funny and topical thing. They like me. They really like All me. All that. That's, that's fine. But Dorian, you see behind him, suddenly realises he's on camera yep. and he gets self-conscious and he starts adjusting his suit and his hair. Yeah. So for a moment, he's kind of brought into this fourth wall-breaking yeah. moment. He, like all of us, was captured in the magic of the mask. <laughs> he was in a way, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just... I know this isn't a bad movie. It's it's just me, right? 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 It's just... I think it's just you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't like his dancing. No. I, I'm sick of his. So- he's got he's got two musical numbers. Mm. His big zoot suit. I guess that's good, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Signature zoot suit. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you know about the original ending to this? No. Is it more morbid? <laughs> what well, in a way? So the the mask or Stanley Ipkiss has a has a best mate. Uh, the late Richard Jenny. That's right. Stand-up yeah. comedian. One of my faves from back. Oh, in the day. really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And you know he does the best mate thing. He's you know he's the John Favreau of this movie. You know That's John right. Favreau turns up in a movie and he's like, I'm your best mate. Uh-huh. I'm your best mate in this movie or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks, John Favreau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's that guy's like, hey, why don't you come to the club? I got some chicks for you. Where were you? You didn't get in the club. Why didn't you get in the club? <laughs> and all these chicks here. And all these chicks at this club at this at this weird club that nobody would really visit because it's weird. <laughs> they would back in the nineties. Oh my god, every, every club in the nineties was a about a, a fake palm tree and a tropical <laughs> drink. You better believe it. Yeah, you might be right. So originally Jim Carrey throws the mask away and he's like, I've had enough of being the mask, which mm. by the way, I don't think he would. I think he'd keep it. But anyway, mm. it's neither here nor there. He threw it away. Yes, that's right. And Charlie was originally going to be the one that jumps in and gets the mask. And they screened that for audiences and people went, mm, no, we don't like this guy and no. So then they went back and reshot it. So the dog got the mask and everyone went... Yeah, <laughs> which to me is cool because that dog also, you see it physically tilt its head into the mask at one point. To turn into the mask. Because it's an amazing dog right? who's still alive, we found out. That's right. <laughs> so is Richard Jenny. I'm just in my uh, heart. I don't believe he still is. It really made, made me sad when I read that, that he yeah. passed away. Yeah. Are you familiar with the, um, this might seem like a bit of a tangent, mm-hmm. but I want you to go with me on this. Are you familiar with Nintendo Power Magazine? Of course I am. Okay, so... That's where I got this Power Glove. It's so bad. <laughs> I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Holy shit, this is hot. So, so that magazine, uh, which I believe is no longer running, actually... No, in my heart. No, no. With the dog it, it and Richard di- No, it died. So yeah, Nintendo Power, they ran this competition for a walk-on role in The Mask 2, <sighs> which we will get to. Mask control. <laughs> Uh, to mask too carious? I don't know. That's very good. That's yes. not. But they had to issue an apology after Jim Carrey declined to return for oh the sequel. No. So for this sequel, which ended up not happening, Dorian was going to return after being flushed down a 
big toilet or whatever, or a bath right. or a bath plug. And then the idea was also to bring back Jim Carrey and Cameron Diaz, and the mask would have been worn by a woman, which often happened in the source material comics. So if this Ms. Lady Mask, yeah, it would have been called. I know some of the <laughs> Ms. Lady Mask. Yet. <laughs> I know some of the uh, the original creators on the mask were like, yeah, if the mask comes back, we'd like to see it go to a woman. So if the mask comes back, they've talked about how it might very well be a lady mask this time around. So before people get all pissy about it, just know that there was a comic one time where they made it happen already. So don't worry about it encroaching on your personal space and love <laughs> for this movie, which quite frankly isn't very good, quite mm. frankly. Stanley Ipkiss's girlfriend wore it after she shot him to death. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's, all, it's all in canon. Don't worry about it. You, you don't want to see that. But anyway, so in 2015, it was revealed that Nathan Runk was the winner of this Nintendo Power competition. Runky! That's right. He said, it's Runk's time to... to <laughs> here I am. <laughs> it's Runk o'clock. Yeah, he didn't have anything to say, so he's just like... Shut up in his zoot suit. Yeah, I'm Runk! And people are like, we don't... We don't know you, we don't, but, what, but what would you like? So he said that as he was the winner of the Nintendo Power contest and once news broke out that the film was cancelled, he was given $5,000, some games and a production jacket as an apology. He also got to chat with Leslie Swan, the voice actress of Princess Peach, over the phone. Oh, nice. Which I'd imagine would have been real weird and awkward to, to do. <laughs> do you want to speak to Princess Peach? Sure. Runk would love... There's nothing Runk would love Runk's more. all about talking to Princess Peach. I've <laughs> got my zoot suit on. I'm ready for action. Did she speak to him in character as Princess Peach? Or was just like, hey, I'm, I'm on lunch. I'm, I'm recording some lines for <laughs> Mario Party or whatever. I don't know. Runk, I'm on lunch. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say to your, your friend's answering machine or whatever? <laughs> I'll do it. Yes, it's me. It's Princess Peach. I'm horny for the, Runk, the Runkatron. <laughs> ding, ding. Here comes the Runkatron, you know, yeah. <laughs> et cetera and so forth. So, uh... Here's the thing about this. It, it did get a sequel, and I want to know whether people actually want us to come back and cover it. I genuinely don't know whether it's worth talking about. I think it's a pretty interesting story concerning it. But, of course, we live or die by the will of the people because sometimes people will be like, do the Thor movies, and we'll be like, no, we'll do the mask. And then some people will be like, we'll do the mask too, and we'll be like, well, maybe we will. Maybe we'll do Thor too. <laughs> That's right. Mask one, Thor two, <laughs> Loki series. That's how this works. But but I'm I, I'm curious though. If they brought back the mask, mm. do you think they could go with a darker version, like in the comics, and people would accept it, or they'd have to keep it this kind of tone? Oh, that's interesting. Good yeah. question. Because this is what people know of this, right? Yeah. This, Highly irritating, annoying version. Because I want to see the, the murderous version. Yeah, but I do not think that would do well at the box it office. It would not, yeah. I think that you're right. The public persona is he's a family-friendly kind of character. With an unrolled dinger in his pocket, smoking but I think, cigarettes. But I think most people have forgotten that stuff. I think they just remember smoking and et cetera. So. Somebody better bloody stop me, mate, because I'm the mask. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody just, said that. They just remember the dances. And I think people would... I, I think, it, again, it would be much more comically accurate to do the super violent one but I don't think audience and they could make one but I think it would tank yeah so would it be like a Judge Dredd slash Dredd situation you know where they went we're going back to the source material and people are like ooh yeah I think so we yeah. like Stallone we think <laughs> <laughs> we think we liked that yeah. movie we think mm. yeah okay interesting Anyway, if we do come back, I also do want to talk about uh, what might be the future for The Mask because a few people involved have been like, maybe I'll come back and do another Mask mm. movie. Somebody somebody stop me from doing a Mask movie. And by that, I mean pay me a lot of money and I might do another Mask <laughs> movie. But somebody stop me, like, like I said in The Mask. That's right. Anyways, this has been The Mask. Fuck everything about this. <laughs> uh, I disagree. <laughs> Enjoyed The Mask. Enjoyed watching The Mask. Good fun time for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's brisk, I guess. Yeah, brisk and horny. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like bloody, your bloody, your bloody, your bloody. Get ready for this, everyone. Sounds like your bloody love life, Mason. Got me good. Somebody stop me. I'm just like Somebody the mask. Somebody stop James. Somebody stop him. <laughs> now I'm going to rob a bank. I'm the mask. Look at me go. He's so horny. I don't like him. In a way, I think the mask informed your entire life up until this point, James. I think he's. I think he's influenced you more than you think. Now people might want to see these videos early. And why wouldn't they? Because sometimes they're good. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Ben does a good edit at the very least, he really doesn't does, he? Yeah, tremendous. And you can actually go to bigsandwich.co and they do go up there a day early. And in addition to that, we do a bunch of different things there, including movie commentaries, bonus podcasts, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, which comes out Monday, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, comes out a day early there if you do want to check it out. But of course, you don't have to, but that's entirely optional. That's right. Some people like it. Like some people like the mask. Some people hate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Different things. 
All right, guys, I'm leaving. <laughs> You're leaving too, right? No, I'm staying. <laughs> okay. I'm going to talk more about the mask. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the mask. You can talk about the mask to yourself and to the, the viewers of the mask. All right, goodbye. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week.